Mitt Romney is promising he'll do what the Supreme Court refused to do today, get rid of President Obama's health care reform law. That's a tall order, even if Romney is certainly elected president. Let's talk about what is ahead. Uh, joining us, two guests, the former U.S. Senator Jim Talent. He's a Missouri Republican, a senior advisor to the Romney campaign. Also with us, Senator Richard Blumenthal, Democrat of Connecticut, the state's former attorney general. Uh, he says repeal and replace. The first thing he does on day one, if he's elected Mitt Romney, a lot easier said than done, given the legislative process. You need majorities in the House and the Senate. Now, that's true. And it's one of the reasons he's campaigning so explicitly on this. I mean, he, look, he, he thinks this law is a loser for the American people. Raise premiums, throw people off their private health insurance under the government rules, cost $2 trillion, you know, to the federal government. But we can replace it with a series of empowering individuals to have different choices for health care. Things like health care pooling, allowing people to buy across state lines. We think those will be popular and we'll be able to pass them. You think that those alternatives are better than what exists right now? I suspect the answer is no. No, and I think between now and then, more and more people will realize the real benefits in patient protections under this bill. You know, I have a unique perspective, Well, because as 20 years I served as Attorney General, I combated the misuse of pre-existing conditions, the caps on coverage, the other kinds of practices, very unfortunate practices, that this bill is designed to eliminate. And I think the American people will realize the benefits of the bill, and I think also we're going to turn to jobs in the economy. Would, would Mitt Romney repeal some of these popular uh, aspects of Obamacare, as it's called, for example, allowing children to remain on, uh, on the parents' oh, well, health insurance program there. until age 26, for example, pre-existing conditions. If you're pregnant, for example, you're not going to lose your health insurance. Uh, what do you well, think? Well, there's lots of ways of doing that without uh, doing it in the context of a law that's going to throw what CBO has set up to 20 million people off of their private health insurance under the government rules. Something's wrong with the law that you have to force the states to but participate But Mitt Romney in. did that in That's Massachusetts happened. when he was oh, governor of Massachusetts. He forced people in Massachusetts with a mandate in Massachusetts. They had to buy health insurance, otherwise they would be penalized. Very different proposition. Why is it very because, different? Because there was hardly any additional state spending, because there was no burden on small business, because it didn't force people off their private health insurance. Big difference between saying, look, uh, a, a state saying uh, you have to buy one of a number of products in a market where costs are going down, and the federal government says, there's a one-size-fits-all product you got to buy in a, in a market where product You're where from the costs Connecticut, are going up. right next door to Massachusetts, is he right? You know, I think, Wolf, if you look at the total law, there are such great benefits in terms of health care, preventive health care, without deductibles or co-pays. The young people that stay on their parents' policies to the age of 26, more and more people will realize that the whole law fits together, but most important, I hope we will not be relitigating or rebattling these old issues and move on to jobs and the economy. And I think both candidates. You will remember be. Rick Santorum, uh, the Republican presidential mm -hmm. candidate? He always used to say in the debates that I moderated that Mitt Romney was the worst person to represent the Republicans when it comes to health care because of what he did as governor of Massachusetts. Well, we've gotten, I think we've got an awful lot of support from Republicans today just because the governor reaffirmed his pledge. And look, I don't think it's, it's, it's re-litigating so much, Senator. I mean, the Supreme Court said that the question, as you know, the question of the constitutionality is different, very distinctly different from the question of whether this bill is good for the American people. And that's a question that the people are going to resolve in the, in the election. You think and the, we have a clear choice. Will this the be a, a winning issue? For, was the president really going to talk about it on the campaign trail right now? Because so far he, he talks about it occasionally, but certainly he hasn't been using it as, as, a, as a wedge to try to beat up on the Republicans. I think the president's going to talk about what's really on the minds of the American people, which is getting America back to work, getting Connecticut back to work. And the benefits are going to become increasingly apparent and dramatically so to the American people as they realize that, to take another example, no discrimination against women no unreasonable increases in premiums. 68% of the people in Connecticut are already covered under their employer's policies. The numbers of people affected by these issues, right. the so-called tax, are relatively Same slim. question to you, uh, Senator uh, Talent. Uh, is the uh, Republican nominee in this particular oh, case, sure. well, we're is he going to be uh, making this a major issue despite some of the so-called baggage he might bring oh, to the table? We've done it today. I mean, you've heard him doing it today. But of course, we're also going to talk about the economic issues. And this is an economic issue. I mean, because the additional burden on small businesses is going to cost a lot of jobs in this country. So, yeah, he's going to keep... Uh, 
litigating, at least in a campaign context, we'll both be, the economy I'm sure and you the guys will be debating bill. this and a lot more coming up uh, four months or, or so to go before the election in November. Four months is a long time, but I think that the benefits of this law are going to be apparent. And I agree that we need to care about small business, and the president does. But ultimately, this I'm sure law the White will drive House's, down the cost. The benefits become, become boost. There's no well, doubt about I hope that. the benefits become apparent because the costs are already apparent. All I mean, right, look, guys. you know, premiums going up already around the country. All right. Uh, thanks so much uh, for, for that, Jim Tellett and uh, Richard Blumenthal. Good discussion.